Native American, you see, so, but, 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 that is representative of the change of the primordial man into this new God, this new state, that benefits the whole of humanity. That's why all of humanity rejoiced. You understand what I'm coming from here? Now, yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring this thing home. So now, but what it is really talking about is not the actual physical human being being able to make an impact physically and economically more than it is the human being as an icon of a change that's going on inside of you. Now, what does that mean? It means that we were a primordial people. The earth um, original stock. We went through years and years of being the great civilizations. And then after thousands of years of being the perfected human that all races looked upon as the perfection, the perfected human, we had done humanity so well until it was highly unlikely that we would be able to change from it because we were the masters of it. In order to change from something, there has to be a deterioration process and a breaking down of the elements that would change from humans. Cause what, so what is the change? Well, the change is the Osirian story. Osiris is the great god, brings civilization to the earth. In one of the myths, there's several myths, I'll just give you one of them. Um, uh, Osir gets killed. He goes through the metamorphosis state, which is the cocoon stage, and the cocoon stage rises up to be a, man, a, a manifestation of the divine Christ or the divine high God to the butterfly stage, the metamorphic stage. So in, in, in so many words, that's exactly what we, were, what we were supposed to do. We did humanity for thousands of years, the original people. And, but that humanity that we did, we were only at the young adult level when we were at our height. Then we went to the elderly level because we were very old, and from there, we are going into our ultimate phase, which the process that we've been going through all these years, these thousands of years, was an incomplete process. It was only a middle stage of what was supposed to be in the future, which is the grandiose glorified body. they got thousands of names for it. The, the Superman, let's put it that way, the cosmic being. So as a result... We had to go into a hibernation period and a milling period where we changed by not only being the original people, but taking in all parts of what was birthed out of us, which was different parts of humanity, going back into our blood system, our blood genes, our gene pool, our DNA, to become uh, an elixir or a mixture of something much more higher, you see. Much more higher. So as a result, as a result, if I, if I tell you that Barack Obama is a symbol of an original Kenyan going through the milling, milling process to get what you, uh, uh, um, um, a, a milling process of another race coming in contact with one race and getting the result as Barack Obama, that is exactly what the Schomburg, the Schomburg said when it came to black people and our diaspora adventure that we went through in, in 2000, they said the same thing. In so many words, the Schomburg did a, did a whole thing on a recapping of African history from about the last 500 years when we first got on, this, on the slave ships. And as a result, they said, well, this is a success story. No matter how much hardship, we have become these new people, the new people. And... It's a, it's, so it's a cosmic drama from the original primordial state to a new people with the ultimate potential. So Barack Obama represented that change. Now, on one hand, we understand this, um, that they, in the Yoruba community, the Yoruba community or the Santeria community in the early 1990s, somewhere around 92, uh, 93, about 17 years ago, they asked a group of artists to draw the Orishas and come up with what type of human form that they would be 
you see, to present to 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 present as a as a as a, a form of artwork to see what these Orishas would look like to contrast as humans. And as a result, when they came to the God Tango, he ended up with Barack Obama's face seventeen years ago. And as you know, Barack means lightning. You see. Um, so, so showing you that there's prophecies, there's Hopi prophecies, there's African prophecies, that had African prophecy. One sister was on a plane, um, in 1978. That's 31 years ago. And as a result, an uh, African came, girl came up and started talking to her and told her that her father would tell them about this prophecy that one day there would be a, 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 a uh, a, a black president in the United States. As, and the same prophecy, the Harriet Tubman and a group of slaves uh, around the time of uh, uh, 1865 and doing Reconstruction, the group of slaves had their same prophecy. But as years go on and we don't document things, these things kind of get lost. <clears throat> so now, that is one side. So some people are saying, well, <clears throat> what about the Illuminati? What about... All the people that he's got around him, what about all the, you know, they don't pick presidents. And you guys must understand, there's certain ways that things are done to be a president. We can't change that. Because it was set up that way by certain secret societies. You understand? So what the spirit world says, that's not important. We can go through those organizations to put what we want because what we want in him is not necessarily his political moves, but as being a symbol and an icon to, as, as a harbinger to tell those particular people around the world that your time has come because of the change. Both he and I was born the same year, 1961. And 61 is Ayin in, in Kabbalistic rule, which means, uh, uh, which means change. Because Ayin, before he had the word chaos, it was called Ayin in, in Hebrew and several other names in, in different texts. But Ayin in the Kabbalistic text, uh, which we know now, we got, we got the, the Tree of Life Kabbalistic text in the Book of the Dead. We got it also in the, the Temple of Komombo and on the side of the Temple of Gendera. We have that, that, that structure. Um, be, and then later on being introduced into Spain by Moses de Leon, who actually uh, wrote the Zohar. But that's a whole other lecture. But anyway, um, the word, one of the words for, the, the word chaos, chaos means change is supreme. And this tells, it tells about us in our particular talents. We would create these great music. And then we would leave them behind. We created blues, we left it behind. White boys jumped on it. We created jazz, we left it behind. The number one jazz players and the number one blues players that graduate from high school every year is white boys. You see. And people say, why do we abandon our stuff? Well, that is the creative process. To create, you always have to be in the flux of change. If you're not in change, if it, 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 the energy is always in a flux of change, and when it is bottled up, it dies. It no longer, so Whitten Marcellus made that mistake. He decided that he was going to bring back the old jazz, and his jazz that he would play never sound as good as Count Basie, Duke Ellington. You see, Never sound as good because the simple fact that it had already been created. He didn't understand the, 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 the ancient cosmic concept of the chaos sphere. Not in the aspect of chaos as what you think it is disorder and disarray, but change, which is Ayn 61. And he ran his campaign, Obama, on change. And as you would know, black people, we are full of change. We used to call it being faddish, but in all honesty, if you are a creative person, your creativity has to change to create something new. By definition of the word creation, you can't create something old that's already been created. You see, so we'll get into that when we when we go into some little properties of melanin, um, which is called chaos in the blood. Oh. Um, you see, which is which is which is the actual change that we're talking about. So, in in a nutshell, what he represents is not Barack Obama being president. But he's, 